Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Now, this loom was made by Gil Hill. Gil and his wife Rose, Rose is in my craft group and Ro Rose's husband Gil is making these peg looms. I will put a link to Rose and Gil's Facebook selling page and their eBay selling page. This is a demo size that Gil specifically made for me. It, they do do lots of different sizes. I've got two small balls of wool and it's four strands in each. What I'm going to try and do to see if it looks any different, I'm going to see what it's like if I do alternative. If I do around every other nail that way and then I do around every other nail that way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it like that. I'll cross over one way and cross over the other. Then I'll cross over and cross over and do my five rounds that way. So I'm going to do around at a time in one direction and then the other and then the next round and then the next round. Well, I'm going to see if it'll look a little bit different. So I've got one what you can do if if you want once you've done one round that way you can just run your wool along there and then do it the other way it's up to you but i've got two small spare balls of this wool so i'm just going to use the lilac up that way so i'm going to miss the first peg i always miss the first peg because it's too close to the corner so miss a peg and go up one, miss a peg and come down. Now we're just going to do that. I'm going to slightly tilt my frame. Oops. Miss a peg. Make sure you miss your pegs. Around that one. Miss a peg, come up. So when you get to the corner, so I'm going to go right around the corner like that because that's too close. You've still got to make sure you miss your pegs. I'm just going to wrap that around there to hold it like that. Push your lines down. Now the great thing about these looms, you don't get all scratched and it doesn't catch your clothes. It doesn't happen with the peg loom. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to do them around this way. Missing a peg each time. But going in this direction. that peg, miss that one, miss that one and when I'm going around I'm going right around this corner this time and I'm going to work my way back filling in the gaps. I missed. Now remember you're doing a peg and missing a peg. We're not doing a full diagonal here. Now I'm going to take this one, push this round down, so that's one round done. So I'm going to do that for my five rounds. I'm going to 
alternate that way. I'm going to zoom in and show you what I mean. So what it's going to do, each one is going to alternate over the top. So the next one will go across that way and then that way. That way I don't have a great big lump of wool going that way and then a great big lump going that way. So we're going to see what it looks like. This is how you come up with a different look or a different idea on your blankets. Because the first way that Jilly did it, we did all the rounds going the one way and then all the rounds going that way. So I'm going to do my round this way now. And the wheel's already there so it's easy to see where you're going. So one round this way. So again, I'm going to just secure it down in this corner and I'm going back to this side. So again, I'm going to follow my wool this way. And now you understand what I mean about having it all cross over like this so that it's not all the one big bulk. But I'm going to get this done. I'll do I'll do my five rounds back and forward like this and I'll come back and show you what it's like. I've sandwiched it in just to see what it's going to look like doing it this way instead of doing the whole five rounds that way and then another five rounds that way. So I've just done it this way to see what it's going to look like takes a little while longer but I'm hoping that we're going to have much much better results with this and it's like I've said already this is how you come up with a different effect on blankets is just giving it a try. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put a diagonal base on and we're going to do two rounds and we're going to do every nail. So I've got black. I'm going to put black on. So again, I'm going to tie it down here on this corner one. I'll see if I can pull that up just a little bit. There we are. I don't worry about the ball of wool on the floor being a little bit small. I've got more. So we're going to do a diagonal base and we're going to do every peg but again I'm going to miss these two out it's too close to that corner and it just it doesn't make any difference not doing them so I'm going to tilt this just slightly down this way so I can work a little bit better you can see the difference it is actually having a stand So we're going to go up and down each peg except for the very last two corner ones. I'm going to go right around the corner and work my way back. So we're only going to do two rounds because we want the flowers to stand out higher than the base. Oops. So once you've done one round, it's up to you whether you run right along the bottom 
it's up to you if you run right along the bottom here and then do your other diagonal this way. It saves you cutting it and moving it around. I need to push that down a bit. That's me, it's not the actual pegs. It's because I haven't pushed it down enough. The stacks of room on these pegs are really tall. There we go. Where am I? That one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my two rounds on and then I'll come back and I'll show you what it's like. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use white. I've got a big ball of white. It's still four strands and it's still double knitting. So I've got four strands. But what I'm going to do on this one is where on the very bottom of the lilac we did one round that way, then one round that way. I'm going to do all the rounds on every other peg that way and then I'll do that way. I want to see what the difference is to what it looks like on this side and then on the other side where we've interwoven it. So again, I'm just going to tie down here. Now, there's one more thing I want to point out. This is the peg loom. <laughs> this is how much room I've got. So I'm really pushing it by doing five rounds on the bottom, two sandwiched in the middle, and then another five. I've never put that many rounds on before on, on this one, on this peg one. So again, the peg loom is going to get a little bit of a testing done. And we'll see how it stands up to that amount. I think that's just about as most that you would ever put on a blanket. It's not going to be too heavy because it's every other nail. So and we've only got and we've only got two rounds on the base. So the blanket itself's not going to be too heavy. So I'm going to keep this on the same nails that my lilac's on on the very bottom for that turnover so I'm going to do my five rounds up and down this way and then I'll do my five rounds that way but remember on the bottom we did it one round that way and then we went that way I just want to see what the difference is and then you'll get to see yourself what the difference is on it and this is how you come up with different ideas for blankets. It's just changing it around a little bit. Just doing it that little bit different. Just to see how it turns out. So I'm going to go back this way. And then I'm going to continue to do my five rounds this way. I'm not going to interchange it the way I did the last time. I'm going to push it to make sure I get all of that on there. So I'll get that done and then I'll come back and I'll show you what it's like. So I've got my five rounds on of the white. I went five rounds that way and then five rounds that way. I've still got some room on my pegs as you can see. Now I'm going to tie it carefully. Because this is as much, I've never even had this much wool on a nail loom, never mind a peg loom. So I'm going to tie it very carefully. And if I see any signs of it not working, then I'm going to take it off. 
I'm going to tie it diagonally in the lilac where the lilac is and I'm going to tie the black. You need to remember and tie your base in. So I'm going to tie that up. Now you have seen me tying before with a shuttle. Just remember, tie your ends in twice. Tie your end ones in twice please to hold it really tight. So I'll try my best with these tight corners that I've got here for tying it in. So I'm going to tie that way and then the black and lilac. Tie it securely here at the ends. Tie it in twice and then tie it securely here as well. Okay, make sure you tie your ends in twice. Now when I tied this up, the way I did it, I tied along the diagonals with purple on each diagonal but on the black I wanted it to separate those little purple flowers so I tied up that way on the diagonal and I tied that way because I wanted to tie over these sections here so that it would have a black line. Now I'm going to flip this board over and show you this side. So when I cut this off, I'm hoping that I'm going to have 3D white puffy flowers on this side and 3D purple or the lilac on this side. But you can see where I've crossed over when I've tied from the back in the black. I've tied all the diagonals. It is a little bit more tying, but no more than some of the other more complicated blankets. And no more sort of then, and no more really than other diagonals. It's not too thick to tie in here. Now I do have problems with my wrists and my knuckles, but I didn't find this any problem whatsoever. And my little peg loom, I love this peg loom. I absolutely love this peg loom because it stood up absolutely fantastic to those 12 rounds on there and the pegs are all still intact it's absolutely brilliant now just as usual what you need to do to cut it off you just do what you normally do on these blankets I'm just going to cut right between the pegs like this all around the blanket just cut between the pegs just as you do for all your other ones now I'm pulling that loose a wee bit just cut between the pegs all the way around your blanket Just cut your blanket free from the pegs like that all the way around. We'll trim, we'll trim that once we've got the whole blanket off. Now here is the blanket. I've got it off the loom. And look at that. Now remember and give it a good scrunch up to make it puffy. You can pop it into the, spray it with warm water and pop it into your dryer for 10 minutes. That's going to make it super puffy like that. If you don't have a dryer, spray it with warm water and then give it a really good buzz with a hair dryer. That helps it to puff up. But if you just give it a really good scrunch, that does it as well. Look at that. 
the black really cuts that pattern. Now, I actually thought this was a different pattern altogether that I came sort of up with, but it's actually, it's not. This is it in the black and white. Now, look at the difference of it in the black and white and in the pink. It's the same pattern. It's the same 3D puffy flower, but that black base makes it pop. If we had did this one, as you can see with the white, and it's tied along here on this section in the white, if that base was black, that pink would be standing so far out of there, it would make your eyes water. Now this one just got a normal little diagonal base, where this one I've done as a turnover. Now, I know my little loom's not big enough for a turnover, but I'm getting that worked on, so don't go worrying about that. Now, look at that. Now, I still have to trim the fringe. I was just so eager to show you this. Now, if you can imagine that's going to be longer like that, if you were doing that as a turnover, with a black base and strong bright colours, on your other side or if you flip it over like that and then you've got your white with your lilac on it I must admit I prefer it that way I do prefer it that way to show that black and white off on that side now it is the same 3D pattern with the extra round so we've got two rounds in the base and we've got five rounds of this flower to make it puff right up like that. And I think it's absolutely amazing. It really, really is. So if you just give it a good little squish and that makes it puff up even more. Now, this is 12 rounds. I don't want you screaming, oh my god, it's 12 rounds, it's heavy, it isn't heavy. Because as you can see, it's an open pattern and it keeps its shape absolutely brilliant because it is all diagonals. But I think it's keeping its shape so well because it's all tied in. So I don't think it was any more tying than a lot of other more complicated blankets. I have problems with my wrists and my knuckles and I manage this okay and it is 12 rounds and my peg loom, amazing, amazing. That loom that I made this on took that 12 rounds and me tying it, it did it really, really great. Now, look at that, it's absolutely beautiful. And I would recommend that you use the black base on this type of blanket. Look how well it stands up like that as a black and white. Now, I do think the 3D does suit it better when you do the five rounds that way and then all your five rounds that way. It stands up more on this side with the whole five rounds going that way and then on the top you've got your other big set of five rounds and I think it stands up much more proud on the blanket. Now this way is still beautiful, it's still really really pretty on that side. So it is still the same, it's still the same pattern as the puffy flower one, the 3D puffy flower, I've just got it on both sides. I've turned it into a little reversible. You can even do that and then do that with a di just a normal diagonal on that side. It's up to you and it's really, that's a lovely light. I wish you could see how nice that lilac is. I know it looks sort of like a blue, but it's not, it's a lilac. Now, I'm going to trim my edges. I'll trim my edges with my big scissors and I'll, I'm going to put a ribbon in it. 
I think to get it to stand up, I don't know what colour of ribbon to actually put on it. I might just put a nice big bow on it, actually, because I think I'd be struggling with what kind of ribbon to put on it because it's black and white and then I've got lilac on that side. Now, I'm going to trim all my edges with my scissors. I'll get it all nice and neat and I'll come back and I'll get a nice big bow on it and I'll come back and I'll show you what it looks like. So here is the little blanket completely finished. Now, I know that ribbon looks blue, but it's not. It's an it's lilac to go with the back. Now, I fed the ribbon through the front. It comes out through the back, and I'm going to end up putting a bow here as well for this side because this is reversible. You can have your little bow on the top like that, and it, you obviously make a bigger one. But I've just done this little demo size and it's going to fit my friend's granddaughter's little pram just perfect and I love it. So there we go. That is how to do a double sided puffy 3D flower. It is easier. You might think there's a little bit more tying in it. But when you tie that black, the black is only two rounds and it will tie really quickly so again what you're going to do is when your blanket's on the frame if you're tying a diagonal and you've only got a little bit don't even start it make sure you've got a fully loaded shuttle when you start your diagonal or even if it's a base if you don't think you've got enough to get to the other side where your knot is not going to be seen because it will disappear into your fringing, don't start it. Just reload your shuttle. Now, with this blanket, what I'm going to explain as well, I tied the lilac. The lilac's on the bottom, so I've used the lilac to tie, and I've got a little lilac cross on my white. I tied securely here, tie it twice, Tie your sections along, tie it securely twice here, then cut your wool and do your next one. Work your way. This this is the same for just a single-sided blanket or any diagonal. Tie it securely twice here, work your way up, tie it securely twice, cut your wool and start again. Tie it securely twice, work your way up and then cut your wool and do each of your your diagonal whatever your color is to get the flower to stand up apart from the other one tie tie both your diagonals and the tie both your black diagonals now you can see I've got black diagonals here I tied all the black diagonals going up this way and then I tied it going that way. You might think, I'm not doing that. It's too much tying. It's up to you if you don't do that. It's up to you. But to get that flower to pop out of there like that, to get it to pop out like that, you need that line of black there. So you have to tie your diagonals that way and that way but on this side so do all your tying from the back so i hope that's a good explanation on how i tied it and how to tie it to get that flower to pop up out of there and that's the results that you get and remember and squish it remember and give it a squish don't worry too much if you've got one petal that's maybe a bit chubbier or longer than the other. Give it a good squish. When it's on the frame, it doesn't look that pretty. But just keep going with it and then give it a really good squish. Because that is what brings it all in and makes it puff up. And as you can see, using black wool in it really makes your blanket pop you really do now there we go give this a little try this is how you do a reversible one you can do this as a turnover if you make it bigger 
you'll get it. It'll look like that. It's up to you if you integrate all your five rounds of your puffy or do it five one and then five the other. It's up to you to try it to get the different effect on it. But there we are anyway. Give it a try. So thank you very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Please subscribe. It doesn't cost you any money to subscribe to my channel. Come and join my craft group, Crafty Twins. You're all very welcome to come and join that. So until the next time, I wish you all happy crafting and I'll see you all again the next time. Goodbye.